Dig is a beautiful, amazing frontend for your retro games that you can install on your tablet or phone to turn it into a retro gaming console. And today I'm going to show you what it can do and how to set it up so you can be a cool retro gaming nerd. Like me! Yo, 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 what's up, what's up? It's your boy, Techweeb, coming at you through the tubes with another lit video, boy! Oh, uh, uh, that's not working, is it? I, I was trying to do the YouTuber thing, like all the kids are watching. Uh, I I'm gonna stop. Sorry. Uh, moving along. This is Dig. Well, not the device. The device is the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, but this is Dig. The software. It's an emulation frontend. <laughs> you see, with this awesome menu and your game lists, and it looks freaking awesome. And it works freaking awesome. I made a video on the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. I'll, I'll link that below if you want to check that out. The RP2 Plus came with its own emulation front-end software thing, but I, I went with Dig. Not just because the front-end that the RP2 Plus came with didn't work very well for me. I actually love Dig. <laughs> I've used it for a long time now. See, this is my first real retro gaming device. It's also my phone. It's not a very fancy phone. It's the Huawei P30 Lite if you're interested. It's not super powerful, but yeah, I like it well enough. I actually do a ton of gaming on my phone. Not Android games, but retro games. I have this telescopic controller that turns it into a sort of Nintendo Switch shaped thing. Uh, this controller is called the iPega uh, something. I, I got it from AliExpress. It's like 30 bucks. I'll include a link to below to this thing if you want to pick one up. Actually, I think I'm going to do a separate video on uh, this controller. You know, like a review and how to set it up and use your phone as a high-end emulation device. So uh, get subscribed if you don't want to miss that. I just wanted to quickly show you that if you have a phone, or any Android device really, and if you have a controller of some sort, then you have yourself an amazing emulation gaming setup. And Dig turns a boring Android interface into a sweet looking emulator program with all your systems and games all beautifully displayed. And get this. Get this you guys. Are you ready? Are you sure? I hope so because here it comes. I'm going to show you how to do this yourself. How to install Dig, add your games, scrape the box art, and get it all set up and running. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Actually, let's have a quick diet root beer break first. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Okay, now, to show you how to do this, I'm going to set up Dig from scratch on this tablet. This is an Amazon Fire tablet that I installed the Google Play Store on, and I, I have this Bluetooth Xbox One controller to use with it. You don't need a controller. Uh, you could use the on-screen controls if you want to just use it on like your phone or whatever, or if you don't have a controller. But a controller is w way nicer to play with. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, the first step is to download Dig. We're going to open up the Play Store and search for Dig. There we go. Uh, click install. And we'll need a program to do our emulation. Now you can download standalone emulators if you want to do that, but I, I highly recommend just downloading RetroArch to handle your emulation. So we're going to download that from the Play Store too. There are two versions. There's RetroArch and RetroArch Plus. RetroArch Plus, I believe, has more cores, but you need to have a better device to run it. I, I, I'm just going to show you the regular RetroArch just to keep things simple. I, I, you'll definitely be able to use this version on your device. And if you want other emulators, like standalone emulators for the higher end stuff, you're going to need to download those. So I'm going to be doing some PSP emulation later in the video, so I'll need to get a PPSSPP emulator which is a standalone PSP emulator. Actually, I've already downloaded this, so I'm not going to bother getting it again, but you, you get the idea. I'm not going to show you all the different emulators you could possibly use, but in the video uh, description below, I'm going to include a list of all the emulators that I recommend for each system. So, Dig is installed, so let's uh, start that and get it set up. It's going to ask, allow Dig to access your stuff, and then you say, yeah, man, I want to allow it. Dig is going to do a little install thingy and then it'll be good to go. And then it'll ask you if you want to look for your ROBS. Now, of course, you'll need ROBS. You can add those to your device however you want. I have a micro SD card in this with my ROBS on it. Now, you can either have Dig scan your whole device looking for your ROBS, or if they're all in one place, like I have here, uh, you can just choose your folder. 
So I'm going to choose my ROM folder on my SD card. You can see here it's going through to find all my ROMs for each of the different systems. There we go. I believe I had just like 11 systems in my collection here. So you can navigate with the menu like this. You could change the view. I like this cover flow view personally. And of course, if you have a controller, you could use the controller to navigate. Now look at this. It's already detected all my ROMs. And you can see that it's already scraped all the art for my games. It did this all on its own. As long as your files are named in a somewhat logical way, then Dig will know what game is what and grab the art for it all by itself. And it'll be ready to go within a, a, a few minutes. <laughs> That's pretty darn cool if you ask me. The next step is important because before we can play a game, we need to set up RetroArch. If you're not familiar with RetroArch, it's basically a program that manages all your emulation cores. So if you're going to want to play a system that you launch from Dig, you need to make sure that you have that core for that system installed in RetroArch or, or else it's not going to work. So let's use the original NES here as an example. I'm going to click the little dot menu at the top right hand corner to bring down the options. And at the bottom, we can go to manage system. And here I can see that the default emulation core for this system in DIG is called Nestopia UE. So I need to make sure that RetroArch has the Nestopia UE core downloaded and installed before I can use DIG to launch my game. So I'm going to back out to my Android launcher and I'm going to start up RetroArch for the first time on this device. I'm going to allow it to access my files. We just need to give it a minute or two to do its first time setup. And there we go. So this is RetroArch and I'm here to download that Nestopia UE core. I'm going to go to the online updater section here, go to core downloader, and here we can see a big list of all the different cores and emulators that we can install. So in this list, I'm going to search for Nestopia UE. And then there we go. So I'll click it. It's going to download and install all by itself. Should be really quick. Uh, there we go. So now I have that core. So I'm going to exit RetroArch, go back to Dig, and I should, in theory, be able to fire up a game and it should launch in RetroArch and, and work. So let's see how we did. And there we go. Nice. It launches and works just fine. Look at that. However, as you can see, our controller does not work by default. We'll need to set that up. The, the on-screen controls work fine though, so if you're just using this on your phone or whatever with uh, no controller, then this will be just fine for you. I'm not very good at games <laughs> using on-screen controllers, so let's get this controller working. We're, we're going to bring up the RetroArch menu using the button in the middle of the screen at the top. And as you can see, our controller does work in RetroArch itself, which means that we just need to set up the controller bindings. To do that, we're going to go into the settings menu and then select input and scroll down to the port 1 controls. We're going to set the device type to gamepad, and then we're going to go down to set all controls. It's going to go through each of the buttons and ask us to hold a button for each button that it's asking for. So let's do that now. All the face buttons, the d-pad directions, the start and select, the bumpers, the triggers, and the analog sticks. Uh, there we go. So let's give this a quick test to make sure that it works. Oh yeah, now, now we're going. This is working just fine. Except for the analog stick. The d-pad works, but the analog stick isn't controlling the game. So let's fix that now. So we're, we're going to go to that input menu, port 1 controls, and under the analog to digital option, we're going to set this to the left analog stick. So that way we can control the game using either the d-pad or, or the analog stick. And then what we need to do next is set up the hotkeys for RetroArch. Since we're going to be hiding those on-screen controls and using the controller, we need to be able to still access the, the menu and stuff. So we're going to go to the hotkeys and if you want, you could just set up a preset combo to access the menu and quit the app. But I like to set up a menu button that will give us a few other functions. So instead, I'm going to go to this hotkey enable option and I'm going to set the hotkey enable button to the select or back button. Then I can set whatever I want to the other buttons that I can access by holding that hotkey button. You can set up whatever you want, but there's five controls that I like to set. I like to set the fast forward toggle to be the right trigger or the bumper. I like to have the X button be my save state. The Y button be my load state. Quit RetroArch I like to set to be the start button. And last but not least, I like the menu button to be the A button. All those other functions like changing save states or whatever, I prefer to access those just through the RetroArch menu that I can bring up with the menu toggle button. So let's try that now. We're going to try bringing up the menu. And there it is. There's the menu. Okay, that works. So let's save our state. And now we're going to load our state. 
Yeah, there we go. That's working good. So now that we have all the important stuff bound, we can get rid of the on-screen controls. I'm going to open the menu using my hotkey, go down to the on-screen overlay, and I'm going to turn off display overlay. Now if I go back to the game, you can see the controls are gone. Look at that. It's like I have a little TV set up here with a game console and my controller. And I have all the controls on the controller working. And I can access the functions with my hotkey. Brilliant. Uh, there's one more important step. We need to save these settings so we don't need to set this up again, ever. So to do that, we're going to enter the menu and then tab over to the main menu section. And then we need to do something special. We need to go down to the configuration file option and then select save current configuration. So this is going to save all the settings that we currently have set up as the defaults for RetroArch. Okay, that's done. So let's test it out. We're going to exit RetroArch and get back to dig using my hotkey, which is start and select. So now when we get back into the game, as you can see, there's no on-screen controls. The controller is working. We can load our state and we can bring up the Re RetroArch menu. Easy as that. Okay, now that we have NES uh, working fine, let's do the same for another system. I'm going to fly through this one real quick, just as a reminder of the process. We're going to set up Game Boy. So in Dig, just like before, we're going to open the options pop up at the corner, go to Manage System, take note of the default emulator, which is same boy here for the Game Boy. So going back to RetroArch, we're going to go into the online updater and go to the core downloader, and we're going to find the same boy core. Click it, wait for it to finish downloading, then we'll go back to Dig, and now when we launch the Game Boy games, they should launch in RetroArch with the same boy core. Let's test out my favorite retro game of all time, Burger Time by the Game Boy. And when you look at that, that started up just fine. Controls work fine, hotkeys work fine. Since we saved the configuration, we don't need to worry about setting up any of that other stuff. Uh, pretty awesome, right? Actually, uh, while we're here, I'm going to show you this real quick. Uh, RetroArch is very powerful. There's a ton of settings and stuff you can do. For example, let's say I want to change the coloration of the Game Boy. See how by default the Game Boy screen is a bit black and white in, in this core? So let's make it more green like an original Game Boy. The way we do that is to open the menu. Here in the quick options, we can go down to the options menu and then video. And here we can change the colorization. Let's choose Lime Green, and we're going to back out to the game, and there we go. Our Game Boy screen now has a greenish tint. I don't have time to show you all the different stuff that RetroArch can do, but I actually made a RetroArch guide. Uh, I used the BU Mini in that guide, but then the principles apply to any RetroArch install. I'll include a link to that video below if uh, you want to check that out, and maybe someday I'll do a full Android-specific RetroArch guide or something, uh, if you'd find that useful. L let me know in the comments if that's something you'd uh, want me to do. So we got our Game Boy working, and you can do the same process for most of the older systems. However, some systems don't have a rich large core, or at least maybe they work better in standalone emulators. So let's see how we can get one of these standalone emulators working. Remember how I downloaded PPSSPP? Well, we're going to check that out right here. Here's the PSP games that I have on my device, and we're going to check what the default emulator is, as always. And you can, as you can see, that it's actually set up to be PPSSPP by default which is good, but if it was set to RetroArch, you could change it here. We're going to leave it on PPSSPP, and we don't need to download a core or anything, do anything in RetroArch. We could just fire it right up from here. Now, because this isn't running in RetroArch, none of our RetroArch system settings are going to be applied. So we don't have our hotkeys for the save state or opening the menu. So if you want hotkeys, you're going to have to set those up individually in the PPSSPP emulator or whatever other emulator you're using for the standalone stuff. I'm not going to show you that, but you, you can figure that out. For the standalone emulators, I, I just use the Android back button to access the menu and do everything that way. The controls should be working by default, but one thing that I am going to do here is turn off the odd screen controls from the controls option in the settings. There we go. So let's load up a state and test it out. Oh, that worked great. <laughs> no issues at all. That's pretty darn cool. So we're going to exit the game and the app, and we're back to dig with our game lists. And that's pretty much the basics there. How to set up dig, add your games, get your games to launch in RetroArch or standalone emulators. And if that's all you wanted out of the dig, then, then you're good to go. You could stop watching the video here, I guess, if you're sick of my voice for some reason. But I'm going to show you a couple other features of dig in case you want to customize it a bit. The default look of dig is pretty bare bones, but luckily there are a, a ton of different themes that you could download and apply. So to do that, I'm going to back out to the main menu in dig, 
go down to options, uh, go to themes, and in here there's an option to browse the themes. It's going to come up with this menu here, and you can look through the themes and select whichever one you like. I'm going to try this Alecful NX theme right now. It looks pretty good. So when I select it, it's going to open up a web page where we can download the theme. Now, depending on which Android device you have, you can either download the theme zip right from this pop-up. But if you have a restrictive tablet, like my Amazon Fire tablet here, it won't let you download from this pop-up web page. You can click it, but it does nothing. It doesn't download. So you need to open this web page in your normal browser. But there's a handy little shortcut right from the options at the top right. Just select open in external browser. That'll open this page in your normal browser and you can click the link and download the zip of the theme. I actually downloaded this one already so I'm not going to bother downloading it again but you get the idea. Once that's downloaded you can uh, go back to dig, go to the themes menu and select install theme. It'll ask you where your zip is. By default it should be in your downloads folder. Select the zip for the theme and click confirm and then it'll, it'll it, it extract and install the theme. Once that's done you just need to go to this select theme menu and choose the new theme. And boom, look at that. It looks all fancy now. Each of the themes has their own way of handling the default layouts and stuff, so you can further customize it if you want by changing the way that it displays your game collections, for instance, or just leave it all, all in default. Easy as pie. And another thing I wanted to show you was this. What if Dig can't find the box art to one of your games? I like this one here, Battletoads vs. Double Dragon on the SNES. I, I Dig didn't know what to do with that one. So you have the option to download that yourself. What you need to do is hold your finger on the game with the missing art, select box cover. It's going to ask where you want to look for the game image. I prefer to use good old Google images, so I'm going to select that. Okay, okay, here's a thing, pay attention. Looking for your own box art is a premium feature. But Dig lets you choose three premium features to use for free. So all you need to do is select this feature as one of your three free features. I also like to choose select random because that's a feature that I actually use to find new games to play and ignore files so that I can hide or duplicate broken games from my collection. Or you could just pay for the app and get everything. Once you select your three feet, once you select your three free fee fee well, well god once you select your three free features you'll be allowed to proceed and download that missing box art easy enough so we just need to find an image we like let's choose this one here download it and once it's downloaded we could use the back button to get back to dig and boom that image we just downloaded is now set as our custom box art and you can also do this if you don't like any of the images then dig chose by default like if you, it chose the wrong version of the box art you, you can replace it in like five seconds one more cool thing that i like is the ability to view the games as screenshots instead of box art because sometimes i like to look for new games that i haven't tried before and sometimes you can tell by the screenshots that you, you like the look of it and it would be fun to give it a try you can just switch the view back and forth as whenever you want well i think that's everything well, once you get this all set up, it's easy as heck to add new games, try out other emulators and cores. It's just a freaking amazing, easy setup. You can install this on Android boxes, your phone, your Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, your tablet. Really, any Android device should work as long as it's running a new enough version of Android to be able to run Dig and Retroid. <laughs> like, come on guys, how cool is this? You can get this set up in like 10 minutes. It looks great, it's easy as heck. And it's just the best looking and easiest emulation front end for Android, in my opinion. And now you know how to do it by yourself. Isn't that awesome? Yay! And that brings us to the end. I hope you found this useful, or at least entertaining. How did I do? Do you have any questions that I didn't answer? What do you think of my guide? I hope it helped you out. And I'm curious to know what you think of Dig. Are there any other emulation front ends that you prefer? I know there are a few good ones, so give a shout out to your favorite front end or emulation software in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, or the thumbs down button if you didn't. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. And as always, I'm TechTweeb, thanks for watching. Bye bye